Good evening, I'm Kimilia and you're watching Kini News. Following the shocking deaths of Tio Beng Hock in 2009 and Ahmad Sarbani Muhammad in 2011 whilst in MACC custody, another case has surfaced involving a man in his 60s who was interrogated at the MACC headquarters in Putrajaya this week. A suspect has died while in custody of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission. The incident occurred at the MACC headquarters in Putrajaya yesterday morning involving a man in his 60s who had been arrested less than 24 hours prior. While details remain limited and the police have not provided information, MACC Chief Commissioner Azam Baki confirmed the incident, stating that the suspect passed away while receiving treatment at Putrajaya Hospital. The man had been detained on Wednesday night as part of an investigation into a bribery case related to mineral mining activities in Pahang. MACC will cooperate fully with the police, who are responsible for investigating the incident. MACC officers involved in the investigation will provide statements to the police and all relevant CCTV footage has been handed over. The victim's body has been sent to Kuala Lumpur Hospital for a post-mortem examination scheduled for Friday morning. The other two suspects arrested in connection with the case were identified as a mining operator and a civil servant. MACC chief has been slammed by a human rights group for remarks about the nature of the man's death in custody. According to LFL, Azambaki has no business jumping to conclusions. Human rights NGO Lawyers for Liberty has slammed MACC Chief Commissioner Azam Baki over his attempt to explain the death of a man under the Graf Buster's custody. LFL Director Zaid Malik said Azam has no business rushing to conclusions as the police have just begun investigating the matter. He said it is for the police to investigate and announce findings or refer the matter to the Attorney General's chambers. In a statement today, Zaid added that no conclusions can be made at this point as to whether or not there was foul play in this death. This was in reference to Azam's remark about an elderly suspect who died yesterday, less than 24 hours after he was arrested in connection with mineral mining activities in Pahang. Azam had said the man who was in his 60s was interrogated at the MACC headquarters in Putrajaya and then died while receiving treatment at the Putrajaya hospital. Elaborating, Zaid said Azam's explanation does not carry any value as he is an interested party since the death involved his own officers and happened under MACC custody. Zaid further urged the Inspector General of Police to form a special investigation unit from the Bukit Aman Police Headquarters to investigate the incident. Bersatu leaders are crying foul and have accused the government of using federal agencies politically after a top Bersatu leader's house was raided by the IRB. The Inland Revenue Board reportedly raided the House of Opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin in Damansara, Kuala Lumpur. A source close to the Bersatu leadership confirmed the raid, stating that it took place on Wednesday. The Star and Free Malaysia Today also reported the raid with conflicting information on the timing. The Star mentioned Tuesday morning, while FMT said it occurred Wednesday night. The raid was allegedly conducted due to unreported income taxes, with files and documents related to accounts and asset ownership seized. Sources close to Hamza claimed it was a politically motivated act, as he has always fulfilled his tax obligations. The specific reason for the raid was not disclosed by the IRB. FMT reported that no negative findings against Hamza were discovered during the raid. Hamza and Bersatu leaders have been contacted for information and comments by Malaysia Kini. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has denied knowledge about the IRB raid on opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin's house. This comes after Bersatu Supreme Council member Saifuddin Abdullah dubbed the raid a cheap political stunt ahead of the upcoming six state elections. However, Anwar told reporters in Cyberjaya today that the raid is the job of the IRB as an investigative body and he was not informed. 
APN MP has been criticized following his obsession with what nurses wear. Here's what other MPs have had to say about it. The Brow MP Jimmy Poa has a message for Kwantan MP Wan Razali Wan Noor regarding his concerns about the uniforms of female nurses. If you can't take it, don't look. Poa urged Razali to retract his statements and apologize to nurses in Malaysia. He emphasizes that the country is already experiencing a shortage of nursing staff due to brain drain, which hampers the healthcare system's efficiency. Pua highlighted that patients seeking medical assistance are primarily concerned about their health, not the nurses' attire. He called for appreciation of nurses' sacrifices and efforts in saving lives rather than questioning their clothing choices. Meanwhile, Bayan Baru MP Sim Zhe Zin criticized Razali for focusing on nurses' attire instead of more pressing matters, especially after emerging from a deadly pandemic. During parliamentary debates on the Health White Paper yesterday, Razali urged for a more relaxed dress code for female nursing staff. He said many are wearing uniforms tight enough to see their figure and are thus not Sharia compliant. Swaram trained its guns on Suhakam today, urging the commission to be more vocal and proactive when it comes to pushing for reforms. Suhakam has been blasted again for being quiet. This is despite the human rights watchdog claiming that it remains diligent and actively engaged in its fight. During a press conference, human rights organization Swaram Executive Director Sevan Doresami asked why the watchdog needed to work quietly. He also urged that Suhakam should be more proactive in its engagement with the public. No, definitely pro Suhakam need to be proactive uh, and also cannot be quiet. We see some, not many statements coming out recently, but at the same time, probably uh, in one of the press, press statements, uh, I think the chair said they are doing things quietly, but it shouldn't. Why you have to do things quietly? It's a human rights. You wanted to promote human rights. You need to be proactive, uh, engage with the civil societies. You wanted to push harder, uh, especially with the current government who promising looking into many issues related to human rights. This week, Suhakam acknowledged that its current activities may not receive as much attention as before. However, Suhakam Chairperson Rahmat Muhammad told Malaysia Kini on Wednesday that they are still able to work like the previous commissioners. He was responding to Sepute MP Teresa Kok, who mentioned that Suhakam's current commissioners seemed quieter than their predecessors during her debate on the 2020 Suhakam report in the Dewan Rakyat on Tuesday. Suhakam has faced criticism for resorting to the courts to settle an internal dispute, which some consider a strategic lawsuit against public participation or SLAP. SLAP suits are seen as attempts to use the legal system to silence critics by burdening them with the expenses of a legal defense. Today, 16 organizations held a press conference at the Suaram headquarters in Petaling Jaya, where they condemned Suhakam Chairperson Rahmat Muhammad for suing the Commission's Deputy Secretary, Shahizat Sulaiman, last month. This came after Shahizat had filed a formal internal complaint on April 10th, accusing Rahmat of racial discrimination and abuse of power. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to miliciakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.